Welcome to It Is What It Is. I'm Shaw Marie. I'm Jean. The famous cough of Jean. Yep. You think it she's is what dying, it is. right? She yeah. thinks she's dying on she me all the time. She first thing in the morning. Ugh. <laughs> Good. The hacking up the lung. Yeah. How's your day today? Good. Good. I had to go to a dentist appointment with my young, my oldest Good. today. She handled it like a badass. So. Good. No root canals needed? Cavity fillings. Well, we had two baby itty bitty cavities. It's that we post lost Halloween, out. so. I guess. They were so small, my daughter didn't even know that she had them. Like, she had no pain or anything, but Good. they were so little that. Just fix them. She has to go through that awfulness of the. The dentist. And she the, loves the dentist. Oh, good. Dude, my kid's a badass in every sense of the way. I really can't believe she's going to be six. I'm fucking mind fucked that she's going to be six. Ah. Dude, I've, I've kept a human being alive for almost six years. It's fucking insane. I tell you, you have to prep her for junior high. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's like a football game plan. All right, this is what you got to do. <laughs> oh, bring it on. I'm just These excited. These guys are going to come at you like this. I'm really excited. The only part of my future I'm super, super stoked for, I'm not even kidding, is to watch my husband with them. Okay, because my husband has a, he has a younger brother and a younger sister. Yeah. Okay, so he does have siblings. He comes from a divorced home. Okay. And they lived about 30 minutes apart. She lives in Rigby. He lived here. So he would spend time here. He'd spend time in Rigby or whatever. His little sister yeah. is his half-sister. Yeah. Okay. So she is the youngest and she's, there's a big age gap mm -hmm. between Adam and her. Mm -hmm. I'll just say her name, Jordan. She loves me to pieces. She won't care. But, um, so he, ra he knew Jordan as a baby, mm -hmm. but he didn't get to be around for all of Jordan's like teenage sassy years and the one thing i love about my sister-in-law is she's a no fuck around bitch mm -hmm. she is dude she don't fuck around yeah she's like my mother-in-law and my mm -hmm. mother-in-law is a very amazing woman but a very intimidating woman mm -hmm. you she doesn't sugarcoat no there's really i mean she ain't <laughs> she ain't trying to really wonka nothing in her life i tell you that right now <laughs> Well, and you know what? When all you have to do when so I'm you just... see people and you say, well, yeah, I have a 15-year-old girl or a 14-year-old girl. And everybody goes, oh, right. it'll everybody, be okay. Everybody, <laughs> dude, when everybody finds out I have two girls, they're like, oh, bless your heart. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, he never got to do the teenage years. And so... <laughs> There's she lots already, of crying involved. They yeah, don't, it's, they it's cry a, a lot. Ton of, it's a ton of freaking emotions. They got a whole bunch of chemicals. See, dude, and I'm know? not good at that. Because when I was a teenager, God blessed me with tits. I woke up when I was like 13. Yeah, and had boobs. And had boobs. I was ready to rock and roll. I was the first kid at school to like have boobs. The whole spiel. So I had a bunch of dude friends, you know. Everybody was super nice. Never. And then <laughs> I, w I became the bully. Like, I was a bully. I'll admit it right now. Shame on you. I was. Dude, I don't know. It, it, when I was younger, dude, going through the shit that was going on at home mm -hmm. and then going to school yeah. and being able to take power over someone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And be a dominant person. It's not right. But that's where it came from. Yeah. I'm not saying that's where everybody's comes from. You but recognize it and own it. Oh yeah, which dude. It's I've had understandable, to, honestly. Oh, dude, I've had you to know. run into people now as an adult. I mean, fuck, I work at Walmart, so I really run into everybody as an adult that I see these people, and I'm like, "You making amends?" I was a piece of shit. I don't make amends. I don't, and I'll tell I'll tell you why I don't make amends. I don't make amends because I don't live in my past. Yeah, that's true. I'm not gonna. I don't expect people from my past to come forward and be like, oh, dude, that one day I hurt your feelings. Oh, fuck you, dude. I'm over it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you did me, this is the way I think. If you do me wrong, dude, you always get a second chance. Yeah. I'm never going to let you fuck me over once and be like, oh, I'm done with you forever. Because shit happens. I understand. I, at least this is what I like to believe. I like to float on this high boat of mine. That I understand people who go through fucked up things. And 
come out of it, either no matter what way they come out of it, they come out of it. And I like to think that I understand that mm -hmm. and that I am, that's why I give second chances. Cause I'm like, Oh, okay, dude. Yeah. You did fuck me over, but also you are kind of going through that piece of shit mode in life right now. Yeah. So let's be friends, you know, Yeah. like I probably won't fucking invite you into my home, but let's be friends. We can hang out for a minute. And then when you're over your shitty part of life that you're going through, Come talk to fucking me. hit me up, dude. Yeah. I'd love to have you back. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would never, I'd never, and I, ever. Well, I, I saw this inspirational billboard one time, and it's it's absolutely perfect. It says, it says the, the past is meant to be learned from, not lived in. Yeah. And that's beautiful, because that's, that's what it is, because when you fixate on the past, and my life is awful, and yeah. I'm, I'm a raging alcoholic because my brother died 12 years ago, or, or whatever have you. You, you, you live in that tragedy, and you don't get past that tragedy. It, I mean, everyone goes through stuff, and if you... Everybody know. goes through things in life, and that's the thing, is like, what do you do to overcome what you've been through? Yeah. And like, okay, so mine, Kevin, I, don't, I, don't, I can't, I don't use the other word. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Kevin did what Kevin did. And I, when I was at home, I would read, I read a book. I read A Child Called It by Dave Pelzer. The man's fucking amazing. Oh, that's an amazing a book. book to read. It's an they amazing. Make it mandatory in school to read that. Do I they? Think, I think. Oh, I didn't. I I'm found it sure. on my own. And I've read every one of them, even his brother's version of events. So I'm reading this book and I'm like, yeah, dude, my life fucking sucks. Could be worse. But goddamn. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, I don't hold Kevin accountable for anything. For one, I look at it as I don't give him the power of who I've become. Mm-hmm. But I don't regret it. Mm -hmm. I would not choose a different childhood. Mm -hmm. My childhood was not horrible. It wasn't. Could have been a lot worse. But other pe members of my family were affected differently. Mm -hmm. Just what well, because you're different people. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Different emotions, different perceptions. The way that people see things. Yeah, but like when know? he got out of prison, I did talk to him when he was in prison a couple times. But, like, if he feels he made amends, that's on him. That's fine. Can I sit back in my childish head and be like, oh, you're a meanie? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Do I? No. Yeah, the I'm main reason why, yeah, the main reason why is I think he even learned a little bit kind of about me in a way, in a weird fucked up way. Because... We have this weird respect. I don't talk to him. He doesn't talk to me. He doesn't force himself. I talk to my stepmom, who is an amazing lady. Yeah. I have no problems, no quarrels, no nothing with her. She's an amazing fucking lady. Truly. Like, she came down for, the, like, the birth of my kid. Mm. She came to the baby shower. She sends birthday cards, Christmas. Like, you know what I mean? They are an amazing couple. I just don't fuck with him. Yeah. Like, I talk to her all the time. And I will talk... To him through people. I use my siblings. I use Andrea to talk because she's one of the only ones that do. But, like, I use her to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And, like, if I feel the need to give him a message, I'm like, hey, tell Kevin this. But we have a mutual respect of, okay, we're not going to invade each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't push That's himself. That's established. Yeah. Yeah. We've established that in our life. Yeah. So I don't live in that past. It's not brought up. I don't have to discuss it. I don't need to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my mom does the whole like, oh, maybe if you just tell every like, talk about it, you'll feel better. Which I kind of like, that's why I love this podcast in a way, especially these ones on Tuesdays, is I do. I do get to talk about where I came from and where I've been and... Our experiences. Yeah. And yeah. like what's happened in life. Absolutely. You know? <coughs> and I just, I literally, after my relationship that I was in. I was in it for what is that? 15 to 18? What is that? Three, four years. Yeah, three or four years? Yeah. Of hell. Yeah. And I lived through it and I don't hold resentments against him. I will not say his name. 
But I don't hold resentments against him. Yeah, it was shitty. But he was also, I look at it through the lens of two eyes. He was going through something else at the same time. He was battling a very bad meth addiction. <coughs> I'll say that. I never did meth. I was, I guess I did. Everybody's always like, well, you had that pill problem. And I did. I had a huge pill and a huge like Adderall problem, mm -hmm. which I guess is just like legal meth. Everybody tells me I did do meth because I did Adderall. I don't like to say I did because I just don't see it that way. <laughs> I do see it from the pill, the ex-pill addict that's like, no, dude, it was fucking, I didn't smoke nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just ruined my nostrils. Yeah. But. And like, even with my drug addictions, I don't blame anything for having them. <laughs> I'm not like, oh, well, you I got. You something as a crutch. No. Your past is a crutch or... Yeah, I don't use my past as a crutch because I don't like to give people power. <coughs> but yeah, like, I just don't like giving people power. Yeah. I don't like giving things power, I guess. I'm really... People say I'm cocky. <laughs> well... Right? <laughs> and I confident. am... confident. She's confident. I'm confident. I'm confident yeah. in who I am. And she's sassy. And my husband will tell you that I am, like, hard-headed as hell. Well, yeah. Because I believe I've gone through hell to become who I am, so I have the right to be who I am. And I've learned that not everybody fucking likes me. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. Do you lose sleep at night because no, of that? No, no. And some people, especially when they get to know me, and I love it when people tell me, when I first met you, I was intimidated and I thought you were mean. I was. I like it. I like it because I'm like, okay, cool. You got, you got what I'm putting off then. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want people to be like, oh, Sean Marie's a bitch, but I want them to be like, I ain't fucking with her. I was, I was like that with your aura. And then I think we were at, uh, grandma's funeral. Mm. You said you can tell a lot about a person by their ringtone. I was like, Hey, she's pretty cool. I really believe that. <laughs> I really was, do. It was Bob Marley, Three Little Birds. You can gather what you will. Yeah, but, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, say what it is. But, <laughs> yeah, like, I just, I have this thing about myself that I'm just like, you know who you are. You know what you've been through. You know what you can survive. Yeah. And it's very easy to be a victim. Dude, it is. Mm -hmm. And we really didn't have a topic for today except for going back to good old Gypsy. Because that case, I didn't give everybody a whole bunch of what Dee Dee did to her. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I did kind of chop it up to like the worst, what I thought the worst things were. Mm -hmm. I didn't say everything. And there is way more to that case if people want to watch the documentaries and stuff. There is way more. Mm-hmm. My fascination with Gypsy is the victim part. Is her mind, the way th that I think that she thought. Yeah. And I look, I like, like I said, I like to think and believe that I can relate to people who go through shitty shit a lot. I mean, and I'm not going to, I don't say this with like pride, but like, you always, you think about taking out those people who hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Shit, I thought about Kevin a lot, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was a fucking pissed off little kid. You, when I, you grow up in a home that's chaotic. Mm -hmm. One of your parents is working all the time, which was my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom was gone all the time. Not all the time. She was always working. My two little brothers, star fucking athletes. You know what I mean? Football, wrestling, and all that. You got my older sister who did her thing. Mm -hmm. And then you got my baby sister who was the apple of everybody's eye, which she still is. Mm -hmm. My husband calls it the God complex. We believe she's a God. We treat her like so. And she lives so far away, so she is a God. You know what I mean? God lives far <laughs> away, so she is. So bless so her heart. Get out, baby. So like... <laughs> You're trying to find who you are in the craziness of everything that's going on. Yeah. Because people on the outside. And that's that age group too where yeah. you're trying to figure out. Who you where, are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you going to act with different people, different And situations. people from the outside looked at our family and they're like, 
oh, he's a he coaches his kids' his wrestling team. He's an amazing guy. And he is. Kevin does have his good parts, dude. I'm not going to say Kevin's a completely bad guy. I won't. I hold on to the bad things. I do. Kevin is who Kevin is. I am who I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't, I tried to fit in where I could fit in, but I didn't fit in in the realm that he thought was. What he approved what of. He, yeah, what I felt he approved of. I yeah. won't speak for him. Yeah. But like, I didn't, we never saw eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Me and him. Mm hmm I am my mother's daughter. Trust and fucking believe that. Was that just that. kind of your own... My own defense? you, your own... Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want this, so I'm going to give you opposite? Mm hmm Okay. And she, I mean, I'm technically the firstborn. Yeah. Okay, my sister, my older sister is my half-sister. Mm hmm And so, the minute I found out my sister was adopted, right, this is the type of kid I was. So I find out my sister's adopted. I'm eavesdropping on my mom. Mm -hmm. She's talking on the phone. And so I hear that. And I'm like, oh, she's not my sister? Fuck yeah. So I run, dude. I run to find her to fight with her and mm -hmm. argue with her. Just so I can say, you're not even my sister. Like, that's my mom. My mom. And I, dude, for some reason, I had a very weird obsession with my mom. Mm hmm I did. Like, I would fake sick at night to keep that poor woman up and make her sit with me in the bathroom just to be with her. Like, that's the kind of kid I was. Well, I'm probably, if you just would have communicated and said, hey. Well, it's hard to find where you fit in. So, yeah. I took the dark side yeah you know what i mean and then i was sitting in school and i found my obsession and i found this book and it was like top 10 serial killers in america or some shit and i found it and i'm like oh my god no one's ever checked this fucking book out <laughs> weird because it had that cute little like bookie thing yeah and i'm like okay so all these people lived their versions of a horrible life and this is what they did yeah you know what I mean? What's going to happen to me? No, <laughs> dude. They fascinated the fuck out of me. <coughs> Even Dave Pelzer himself. Like, you went through eating your sibling's shitty diaper. Being thrown in what? the... What? Dude, yeah. She no, would no, make no, him... No, eat. I don't yeah. know. No, 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 it's no, in the third no, book. No, the third book. No. Yeah. No. no, the second, maybe. The second or third. Please Are don't quote me. Serious? Dead fucking... Just to get some fucking food because she wouldn't feed him. She wouldn't fucking feed him. She'd make him fucking clean the ba the bathroom with a fucking ammonia dude and lock him in there. Like kind of gas chamber him. Yeah. Like she wouldn't if feed him. She caught him. Much, why didn't she just leave him in the hospital and abandon him? You don't get in trouble for it anymore. You know? Yeah. God almighty. But like he lived through that Probably and he took. Idaho anyways. Sorry. He took that and he was like, you know what? I'm going to better myself. Yeah. So I'm reading him and I'm looking into serial killers and I'm like, I'm not a fucking victim of shit. Like, yeah, my dad beat my, beat us up. Oh, okay, I can't say beat us up. He didn't beat us up. But like, he had his demons, his anger, which I, like, we lived through. You know what I mean? It wasn't all of us who lived through it. This is the way I remember it. Yeah. I'm not saying that Kevin's a bad person. I won't put that out in the universe. I won't. Because he is one of those people that did go to prison and he learned and he has become a different person. Maybe he doesn't live in his past. I don't believe he does and he yeah. shouldn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No one should have to live with their past haunting them all the time. No one should. And I'm, I'm, I am I'm can't say that because I mean I bring up shit when I argue with my husband from years ago and I'm like yeah that one thing. That one thing. Because I'm an ass. And it's my one card to play. Mm. In a hard spot. So... Like, I don't know, dude. Like, I just, I chose to look at life through a different lens and that people aren't always who you think they are. People don't stay the same. People don't. Some people do. Some do. Well, and in so, relationships, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a romantic. I think that you grow in your relationship and you don't, you don't change, but you kind of, 
don't know if you adapt or... You do. You mold or... together. <coughs> exactly. You mold together. In a relationship, <laughs> though, when you're like... Any relationship, though, there's always a sense of, I think, anyway, of control in every relationship from both sides. Yeah. From both sides. Yeah. You don't want to be... Sorry, Jean doesn't mute her phone, people. You don't want to be... You don't, no one ever wants to think you're giving up your power. No. You know what I mean? Well, who likes to be helpless? Every, no. And no one likes to fucking give up their power and be like, okay, well, Jimmy's going to tell me what to do every day. Yeah. And Jimmy's like, uh, Susie ain't going to fucking tell me what to do every day. So there is a little bit of control in every relationship because you want to stay you in the relationship. Mm -hmm. These are just relationships I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not speaking for the fucking world. Don't hate me. But like with Gypsy, I do, I, I see it. I see where she was like, there is no way. And like we were talking about it after we recorded, we probably should have just recorded our mini afterward because our debate was really good. My poor husband just sat there and laughed at us. But like <clears throat> for her, I feel like she felt that she had screamed it from the rooftops. Okay, that there was an issue. There's a problem. Someone help me. Yeah. In my relationships, I felt the same way. I'm screaming from the rooftop. You people are fucking blind. Mm -hmm. Someone help me. Like, I cannot help myself. Because mm -hmm. you tried everything. Yeah. At least I thought I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really did. I thought I dropped enough hints without actually saying things. I, you know what I mean? Like... I thought I did. I thought I told friends enough. And you got to look at it from Gypsy's perspective of she, I was blessed with my cousin. Me and her grew up fucking steps away from each other. A, we used to meet at the railroad tracks. You know what I mean? When yeah. we actually split up, we, had, we walked to meet each other. We'd stay weeks at each other's houses. And her mindset was a mindset I liked. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was blessed. I had someone that I could vent to and tell all the fucked up shit to. Mm -hmm. And that's a blessing. I only had that for a short amount of time in life because she ended up, she moved away, you know, fucking became her own person, went through her own shit. Mm -hmm. But Gypsy didn't have that. So I, I feel that she was like, my only way of getting out of my situation is this. I don't want this to happen. It's the only thing that can happen. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want people to know. I'm not saying that she had that the right. Acceptable. Yeah, or that murder is acceptable or mm -hmm. that's what you should do. If you are in that situation, scream louder. And that's what I've learned through life is you need to scream louder and not assume that everybody around you knows what you know. Like, yeah, dude, I'm si like, I see people all day, right? Like I see girls all day. Girls have black eyes, fat lips, whatever. I don't know their situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's happening. For all I know, she's fucking hardcore and just went and got in a bar fight or some fucking cool story. Mm -hmm. I don't know the situation. Roller derby. Yeah. But for all I know, she's walking down that aisle with no makeup on. Or it's very visible. And she's screaming to the world. She is screaming to the world, but no one's going to stop and be like, hey, honey, did... Your man beat your ass. Do you need help? Do you need help? No one does. That's just not who we are as humans. We see it and we're like, oh, that chick has a black eye. We point out the obvious and we walk away. But they have the black dot thing now. If you see a black dot, that's the woman asking for help. Like, help. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. If you come into Walmart with a black dot on your hand, I am not about to cancel you. <laughs> like, I'm not. I'm going to think it's some crazy religious cult shit. I'm just not. And it's the society we live in, dude. It's kind of like, handle your own shit. Kind of, yeah. As a, as a whole, people generally yeah. 
Like I have too business. much shit going on in my own life. Sorry, Sally. I cannot help you today. I'm already balancing and struggling 500 things on my own. Yeah. But if you are going through those things, dude, fucking scream louder. If you have been through it, fucking take your voice and do something with it. Don't, I'm not saying fucking be an activist or whatever, but truly sit down and think to yourself, is what Jim did worth me giving him the power today? Is it? Is that time I'm taking up thinking about what happened with Jim uh -huh. worth my fucking time? Is there going to be a... An, a are you going to change anything? A different end result? Yeah. yeah. As much as you want to sit back and think about it and dwell on it, is that going to change it? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Because guess what? It already fucking happened. Yeah. And that's the thing that I like to think that I overcame through all of my shit. All of it. And people do when they talk to me and they find out the whole story and everything else. I always get... Oh, there's so many different paths you could have taken and you could have, I mean, you could be a crackhead who's just, oh, daddy issues. Oh, mm -hmm. my boyfriend beat me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was a fucking pill addict. Like, oh, super sad. Mm -hmm. Dropped out of school. I have really no edge of fucking location. Like, yeah, dude, I could have taken a sad route where I sat there all day and I said, oh, woe is me. Feel bad for yourself. Yeah. Some, sometimes those days are allowed. You just get your. I your don't ben give Jerry's. myself them enough. No. I don't, dude. Yeah. And I will say that right now. I don't like for me to cry. It's super weird. I have to be super mad. Like if I. That happens to me too. Yeah. Oh god, I hate that because then your voice starts shaking. Yeah. And you're crying. Yeah. And you look like a pussy. Yeah. Like, a like that's like Pits. the only way I can truly cry. And then once I start crying because I'm mad, I kind of go back into victim mode and I'm like, I'm going to take this moment and I'm going to be sad for everything that's happened since the last time I did this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stew on it. I'm going to sit on a so soapbox and I'm going to be like, look at me, look at me. You hurt my feelings this day. You hurt my feelings that day. Say sorry now. Make amends. Make me feel better. Make you know that you were mean. Mm-hmm. Famous for it, dude. I'm fucking famous for it. Ask my poor husband. The man lives through it. He has a lot of patience. He fucking... Oh, <laughs> bless his heart. He does. Good man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's sassy as hell his own self. But, like, I get it. I get... And especially in an abusive relationship like that, dude, I get it. I don't think Nick deserved... Life without parole plus 25 years. The boyfriend? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fucked up. I really, in all my heart of hearts, if Gypsy would have gotten charged with something besides the, what, I don't even remember exactly what she got charged with, but she really should have gotten some type of time for fucking with that dude's head. You know what I mean? She wasn't as slow as everybody, as she wanted everybody to believe she was. Yeah. Well, and if it's if she was in that situation where she felt that that was her only way out, and I think that's where the lines. That's crossed. where I disagree with you thinking that that's the only way, and the reason why I'm not angry with Gypsy for what happened. I feel bad that she's in prison actually because of what she went through. It's kind of like what we were discussing before. All of those documentaries is just a recap. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was taking medication that was so unnecessary for such a long period of time that her teeth were falling out. Mm -hmm. You were having... That's a long period of time. Yeah. It really is. So, I guess what I'm thinking is when, especially when she found out that she was actually 19, because mom's crazy, and then she had internet access. Mm-hmm. In my mind, instead of finding someone to help you kill her, how come she didn't email the doctor? Reach out to different authorities could, that can be like, hey, let me, you know, share a video of her walking to her primary physician or, or the state 
you know, or mm -hmm. Social Security because I'm pissed off that Dee Dee did not have to pay for those crimes. All of the years of defrauding mm -hmm. all of those people mm -hmm. and inflicting that much pain and suffering on your child. Yeah. You know that mama lion feeling that comes mm -hmm. over you, especially your first bo born. You ball like a baby because it's such a spiritual, powerful moment. And to use that for your own gain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For herself. It's the most selfish thing in the world. I think Dee Dee should be in prison for life plus 25 years. Oh, for sure. For and sure. I'm angry at that. I'm angry that Gypsy went the way that she did because now she's in prison. I mean, no, the wrong could person's she in jail. have really helped? Yeah. You know, reaching out. I mean, she had the internet access. She had all of that stuff. I guess that's my way of taking back that control. When you're in that beat up, then you, you, you do, because ugh, when you're beat down so much, you don't think confidently of yourself. And no. so for you to think, is this worth my time? How can I take my power back? Mm -hmm. That's a step in itself. Mm -hmm. You know, and... I'm all about just to take your full power back. Turn this bitch in. Well, that's the thing, though. and You know, have a surprise visit where, the, where you don't call and make an appointment. You but that's, know, how Department this, that's how, of the, Children that's how the government welfare. works, though. I swear to God. Well, everybody cleans up with that for that appointment. Well, it yeah. makes everything pretty. You drop in like the fucking U.S. Marshals. There's a new show on TV now. But you drop in like the U.S. Marshals at 6.30 in the morning when coffee's not even started. And then, guess what? There's a different picture going on. Yeah. Because Gypsy Rose is probably washing the morning dishes. Yeah. For all we fucking know. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the that's thing, That's where though. my anger is from. See, and I go back to being in her headspace where she was screaming to the world. And she got away once, got caught, mm -hmm. and got taken back. So I see where she's like, okay, there is no escaping this woman. And Dee Dee in the show, and I did read, and I did re see the other documentary where it is true that at one point in time, Dee Dee straight told her, like, now you know how old you are, because it was a big, huge fight. Now you know. So guess what, little girl? When shit comes tumbling down, I'm not by my fucking self. Now you're defrauding with me. You're okay, committing crimes but with me. No. So now you're scared. The, I know, but that wouldn't have gone for shit. That we think. I really we doubt think. that. I really. We <sighs> think, dude, but to her. Yeah. The one person who's con been in control of her is now telling her, this is what will happen. We're in this together. This is the, this is the end road. You fucking tell on me. We lose it all. Everything. You lose everything. You really going to put your sweet mom in jail? Yes. We sing a song together. We have songs. Like, I'm your best friend, Dee Dee. I mean, Gypsy. You know what I mean? Mm hmm There's that control. Where she's like, well, fuck. Now I'm fucked. I have to sit here and deal with your bullshit. And live through it. Or else I'm going to go to jail with you. Yeah, at that point, she's just out living her mom. Yeah. And now that's really what it turns into is a competition of who's going to fucking die first. Well, guess what? Huh. Your card's up, mom. Pulling it. Gotta go. Yeah. I mean, and I'm sure she felt remorse that day. I'm sure she felt remorse sitting in that bathroom, having that conscious battle of, do I stop him? Is it too late? Is it done? And everything else. But then why document it on Facebook? Because she wanted someone to find her mom. So you call it a missing person? No, that was her thing. Is She didn't want to... She, as naive as... And I believe she was naive to this point. Did not know that they could track her back to where she was. Did not know that they had the power to look at where she was sending that from. And she got feeling bad, dude. No one... She'd been looking, waiting for someone to realize something was wrong. And no one did. So she had that and that guilt that kicked in of my mom's there. just laying there alone. No one knows what happened to my mom. Mm -hmm. 
So let me put this out into the universe so that someone can find my mom. Fuck if they find me. I don't care. We're going to run away. I'm going to get away. Mm -hmm. But she still deserves to be found. It's the love aspect, dude. Yeah. And it's just like husbands that kill their wives that report their wives missing. You still kind of do. You feel remorse. I like to think even though they do do fucked up things that you have that moment where you're like, oh, well, that was a life, but I yanked it. I'm not saying that like the Ted Bundy's and all that shit have it. But I'm saying the people who have that one victim, the two victims and their family members or spouses or whatever. I'm not talking about family annihilators or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a heat in the moment. Shit happens. And that's the scary thing about life is at any point in time, shit could happen. Like with the Walmart shooting that you were brought up. We don't know much about it. It was in the parking lot though. You know what I mean? I walk out into that parking lot every day. Every day. Yeah. A hundred times a fucking day. Like when your number's up, it's up. People don't have the right to take it from you. And Gypsy didn't have the right to kill her, but she had the right to escape her. Yeah. And sadly, that's her path of escaping her. Yeah. And that's just really what it comes down to. Like, and even in my domestic situation, there were times that I woke up and I was like, well, fuck, I'm alive. Like, awesome. I really thought I was a goner with that one. Like, you know what I mean? So... At any point in time, your number can be up. And there's people I know that I got gotten in bar fights, hit someone, they hit the concrete and die. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are a bunch of deaths that are accidental. Yeah. That do happen. That doesn't make that person that did it a bad person. It was a moment. It was a moment. Mm -hmm. And moments need to account, I believe, account more. Than what they do. Because I believe that if you are put in that situation. And you're put in front of a jury. Someone needs. I always wanted to be a lawyer. Because someone needs to be there to explain in depth. That moment. You make a good court advocate. They're always looking for volunteers for that. Oh dude I'm down. But like for the kids and stuff. Yeah. You know. You have to live. In that moment with that person. And see what it is. And it's like I tell everybody when I meet up with my cousin or I talk to my sister or I even sit here and talk to Jean in the office. When I see you, I get diarrhea mouth, okay? And I tell you everything that (laughs) happened since the last... Well, thank God we see each other more now so it's not as frequent that I get to do it. But before it was like... Oh my God, I haven't seen Jean in two weeks. So I'm going to spill everything that happened in that time. And when people complain and they bitch about their families or their spouse or whatever, unless you have a daily report of what happens in their home, you're getting all of the craziness that happened in that house. Cliff note version. The cliff note. And I ain't fucking telling you what I did. Trust and believe. I am not that person. I'm here to bitch about what he did. Yeah. And what they did. You know what I mean? I'm not here to say, hey, I was bad. That's not what I'm fucking here for. <laughs> so. But when, you, when you're when you asked, you don't. Well, yeah, I, I don't yeah. deny. When people are like, okay, well, what did you say? I'm like, well, that don't matter, does it? Because now your whole change. Now it's going to change. God damn it. But like, yeah, dude. Like, I just think that you always tell everybody all the shitty things that happen at once. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't sit here and I'm not like, oh, well. Tuesday of two weeks ago, this is what happened or whatever. I tell you it all at once and I leave it up to you to know that it wasn't all in one day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or one whole week was just a bunch of shit. Yeah. And so when people snap and everybody's like, oh no, dude, she always said that they were like, they'd fight, they squabble. She never told you everything. Mm -hmm. No one tells anybody everything. And if you do have that one person in your life that you tell every little fucking thing to, God bless you. Yeah. Don't ever lose that person. Yeah. Mine was our dog. And when she died, I was like, fuck, I just lost my counselor. I'm not even kidding. 
Eric had a dog when we first got together. His name Roxy. was Roxy. And I told that dog fucking everything. Everything. Every thought, every feeling. And she was with me during my first pregnancy. Yeah. Where I'm going through a bunch of crazy shit in my fucking Well, head. the dogs are adorable when they're yeah. pregnant. And I was, aler- I was allergic tummy. to her. And Aww. so it made it worse. So, like, we really did bond because I hated her, but I loved her. But, like, I told that dude, I told her everything. She was literally my counselor. And then she died, and I'm like, oh, well, now I don't have anybody to tell everybody anything to. Mm. And everybody's like, oh, well, you have your husband. Do you tell your husband every feeling? Every moment during that day where you wanted to smack him upside his head. Um, every, mo- every feeling you had that day, do you tell him? No, not every single one. No. No. No one ever really does. Yeah. I mean, hey, dude, if you do sit down with your husband or your wife, or your children, and you're like, hey, today, when you kept drawing that B backwards, I kind of thought you were fucking dumb for like a second. But, you know, be better. Do yeah. better. Yeah. Just had to tell you. No, you don't. Like, no one ever says how they really feel all the fucking time. Not all the time, though. No. No. And so that's why I always, that's why crime fascinates me, is because I feel unjust. For the people who do have a heat of passion, I'm not even going to call it passion, just a heat in the moment. Mm-hmm. Just to be in that ki- that psychotic, crazy, everything's happening, you don't know exactly what the fuck's happening. Like, it's just crazy. And things happen, and then at the end, when everything settles, you see the tarnish around you. Yeah. And you're like, well, fuck. That could have been worse. But you don't see it then. No. You know what I mean? No, because it's overwhelming. I mean, that, that, yeah. that when it rains, it pours. Usually. Yeah. You know? So, that, and I don't, and I think when I sit back and thought about the last episode, I did kind of make it seem like, fuck yeah, kill your fucking mom. She's fucking mean to you. Fucking kill her. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. I do believe Gypsy has a very rare, very rare case. Yeah. And I, in her Hers and hers alone, I don't blame her. You know what I mean? And I'm sure I've come ac- well, I've come across not the many only murders. One that's been there. The, the child yeah. called it. You yeah. Know? I mean, uh, it's just the path you take, yeah. and that's the path she chose to escape her monster. Well, I also feel, as a side note, I mean, we have to take tests to drive cars. Why can't there be a common sense test that says, "Hey, no offense, don't have kids." There should be. I know a bunch of people, but... Come on! But still, it's up. even if you are born into a shitty situation, dude, it's your choice on what you do. When you think at life, dude, it's really all up to you. Yeah. You are accountable for you. My little brother just got to prison, right? Mm-hmm. And... We all sit around and we're like, oh, fuck, man, because he has to do, do all of his time. He's topping out this Step time. Now. Yeah. So we all sit around and we're like, oh man, I really hope this is the last time. This is the last time we're here. Do you believe that when it comes out of your mouth? No. I don't think you've ever said that. I don't say that. And I love my brother. Dude, I would fucking kill for my brother. Do you hope he has that light bulb moment that you talked about? I do. I really hope it happens. But I'm not going to put all my coins in one basket. No. Because I can't control him. As much as I want to. Even with my baby brother. Choices that he makes, I'm like, ah, 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 fuck, I'm not your mom. Yeah. And I'm not you. I do let him know, like, hey, I hope you know you're fucking dumb. I love you. And when this falls down upon your head, I will be here to hold you. Mm-hmm. And that's what I tell, that's what I tell my other brother. But me and my other, bro- me and my brother that just went to prison, I call him Lexus. We went through shit together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we went through Shit. our version of hell together. Yeah. And so we hold a lot against each other in the protective situation of, you're my brother, you could have protected me. I'm your older sister, you could have protected me. And Resentments. He, resentments, yeah. And he likes to live in the, in the past. He uses it as a crutch. He does. Mm-hmm. And he knows this. Mm-hmm. Believe me, I am not telling the world anything my brother does not fucking know. Mm-hmm. 
or that I have not told him multiple times. Because me and him fight like we're 90. We do, man. I mean, fuck. We will go. You're like those sisters that are on TV? Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah, like we will go forever without talking to each other. And then when we get around each other, we're like, oh, you're, ugh. Ugh. Like we just, we just can't. We can't because I won't live where he lives. Yeah. So there's a difference. There's a difference for everyone who's gone through their own sort of bullshit. There's you live in your own world in your own way of defending it, living in it and being in it. He likes his situation to be, I think, oh, woe is me. Mm -hmm. I don't live there. I make sure my little brother that lives with me doesn't live there. Mm -hmm. I constantly tell my sisters not to live there. My little sister doesn't. My older sister, like I said, dude, she's gone through her own fucking horrible moments and battles in life. Mm -hmm. When you look at your siblings, I use my siblings and my family a lot for a lot of examples because I have a million in them. But like we as children, you always hate your siblings. I don't care. Who you are. Oh, we, I didn't get along with my brothers until we all moved out and had kids. Right? And became moved. adults. Yeah. 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 And then it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And like... Still is. Right? And I just looked at my siblings like you guys got all the love. Mm-hmm. You guys got everything. And you got anger. And I got the fucking brunt of it for some reason. I w and literally, guys, I have been the way I speak now my whole fucking life. I have been... Sassy pants. Sassy, obnoxiously loud. I'm. That's just who I am. I'm not obnoxiously loud anymore. But I think you're beautiful. So thank you. But I've always been a very cocky. My way is my way. Mm -hmm. Person. Mm -hmm. Always, my whole life. So it's just the way it is, and my siblings aren't that way, and so they handle trauma, past, and whatever differently. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I'm not t saying anybody who does live in the past is wrong. I mean, if your past is, your past is your past. You know what you've been through. You know what you've lived through. If you feel comfortable letting it control you, that's you. I can't tell you not to be that way. No, you shouldn't. I'm telling you to look inside your beautiful self and figure out that the past is the past. Mm-hmm. And we live in the day and age that if we could go back and fix it, would we be who we are? Would we? Because I don't believe I would be who I am if I didn't live through what I lived through and conquered what I conquered. I don't believe I would be the person that I am today. Mm -hmm. Probably you know what not. I mean? Probably yeah. not. Yeah. And I never changed about myself. I never did. Well, I did, I lost myself obviously in my relation, that relationship and everything. But once I found myself, I was determined I was never going to lose it again. And I've stuck to that. I've said everything I've said and I've meant everything I say. Mm -hmm. If I say it and we're not in an argument and I'm not just trying to hurt your feelings, I fucking meant it. And I am somewhat good at being like, ah, oh, shit, I shouldn't have said that. And coming back to you and apologizing and being like, dude, I really just said that to hurt your feelings. So I'd win. My, win my inner battle. Because I, I do. I get into an inner battle where we are on the fucking war field. We're on the field. Yeah. It's me or you. Yeah. Even in an emotional battle, dude, I will fucking eat your soul. <laughs> But I will try to give it back to you. That's why I have you at my back and not in, in my face. <laughs> like, I'll try to give it back to you and be like, oh, you know how I said that you were a shitty person. But really, dude, really, you're not a shitty person if you would just not do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I meant. So, oops. I'm not good at saying sorry. Because I truly believe if you're sorry, you won't do it again. You won't say it again. Yeah. We won't have to fucking revisit it again. Yeah. If you're sorry. We won't. Sorry means it's over. It's done. Mm -hmm. Sorry. True regret. Finish it. Yep. So I don't like to say it unless I mean it. And it's very hard, especially with my poor husband. I don't see the harshness I go to. Because if you put me in a situation where I feel like I have to defend myself, I get into a very... Till this very day, 
a mindset that I don't like. Yeah. Because then I automatically start thinking of all the things about you that I can point out in this moment that will take everything you're saying about me and, and flip it. Yeah. I go to, well, dude, I wouldn't say that if you didn't do this. Mm -hmm. I am very bad at sitting back and being like, oh, you had the right to have a feeling. And sometimes you have to just stop and, and your emotions <laughs> are your emotions mm -hmm. and you can have them and please keep them. I have a very hard time with that because I don't think anybody should try to control anybody or have a mind control over anybody. And I try to believe that I'm on the defense and I have like this big, huge shield and I can point it out a mile away, but I know that's not the case. You know what I mean? But I like to believe that I am made of steel. Yeah. I do have a very big metal brick surrounding. And if I let you in my surrounding, what you do hurts me worse. Yeah. Because you've developed trust. Yeah. Because then you make me feel weak. Yeah. And like with, with my brother, the main thing I hate is when people make me feel dumb. Oh, yeah. If you make me feel dumb. Fire. You instantly <laughs> piss me the fuck off. Yeah. Instantly. I don't care who you are. Automatically happens. Yeah. The minute I feel like I look stupid, I'm mad. Yeah. And it's just that way. And with him, it's backing him up. It's defending him to the world and being like, no. He had a sad childhood, damn it. Mm -hmm. He was a sad little boy. Mm-hmm. You guys don't understand. He's going to change. It's going to change. He's not going to go back to jail. Mm -hmm. You made me look dumb, bro. Now I'm sitting here and meeting Crow and I'm by my fucking self. Yeah, and then they twist it around. There's, oh, you never got my back. You never yeah. helped me out. And mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, I hate that. Don't make me look And like then you want to put it all on me and be like, hey. If you would have done this. Yeah, if you would have just hugged me that one time. Fuck you and your hug. You know what I mean? You're a fucking grown person, mm -hmm. my friend. Grown. And that's where I, my sympathy stops for people. It does. I love people. Don't get me wrong. I am not sympathetic. And I don't pretend like I am. I'm not. Sympathy with me is a very hard thing. Mm -hmm. You must come at me with some hard ass shit, dude. With a very, very sad story. Yeah. That I cannot top with my own personal experiences. Yeah. You best come at me hard. And if you do, and I, you win my sympathy, fuck brownie points, bro. Because it's really hard. Because I have a hard time listening to people who live in the past. And oh, my mom was so mean to me. So this is why I am a conniving bitch. It's because my mom was mean. Okay, cool. You gave your mom a whole bunch of power there. Like, your mom obviously won. And that's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. I see everything as a win or lose. And I'm not going to lose. Mm -hmm. And that's just my inner battle that I fight to this very day. I have calm, my, like, and people who see me now are like, oh, dude, you're not as crazy as you used to be. And I'm not because I do, I've put myself in their headspace before I give you sympathy. Yeah. If that makes sense. I like to look at it as, Oh, okay. You do have a shitty life and that's probably why you're a fucking sass. That's probably why you're a dick. I will point it out to you though. I am famous for being like, why is your life so miserable that you must make mine? Like what happens in your day that you are such an angry fucking person <laughs> that you think that you have the right to come and make me feel that way? Yeah. Why? Tell me why. I mean, if I legitly made you fucking, like, my presence pissed you off, why? What did me do? What did I do? And maybe that's, like, the selfish way of looking at it. Because I always do. I always come back to, well, what did I do to make this situation happen? Mm -hmm. And if I don't feel like I made that situation happen, fuck that situation. That's your problem. You need to get over whatever your bullshit is. And I give people that one time. I am a, I think I'm really good with confrontation. Yes. If you handle it the right way with me the first time. 
if you come at me and you say, Shamari, when you said this, it really hurt my feelings. This is why I don't really want you to say that ever again. I don't want you to do that to me ever again. Please don't bring it up. You really hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. And I'm like, okay, dude, yeah. Like, fuck, let's shake hands. Let's hug it out. I'm sorry. But if you come at me and it's just nothing, you didn't do anything. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. You're not fucking mad at me then. Yeah. It's over. It's done with. Yeah. Move on. Don't bring it up in a month. Yeah. <laughs> Don't come at me in a week and be like, you hurt my feelings last week. Fuck last week, dude. It's last week. Yeah. I ain't going back to last week. Last week sucked. Move on. Well, and that's important that when, when you are a victim of mind fucking is the best way to say it. I say victim of circumstance. You need to just find that power in yourself and yeah. Yeah. Take it back. Yeah. Live your life. Yeah. Be you. Dude. Not I, from yesterday. No, not from yesterday. Be who you are today and move forward. Don't change who you are. If you wake up tomorrow, dude, and you look at yourself and you're like, dude, I am a fucking amazing person. Mm hmm. Go. Go. Don't let anybody throughout your day affect you. It's not. It's your choice. Yeah. If you let How her cunty attitude affect you. Yeah. You be you. Is our message for today is you be you. Mm -hmm. Fucking conquer it. Because you're beautiful. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. beautiful inside and out, dude. And you just need to conquer it. And I'm not going to say I don't hate people because that bitch knows. You know what I mean? I do. I don't like people. There's some people I don't like. Yeah. It's a personal way of life. But I just want everybody to know that I love your minds. Mm -hmm. And I love to believe that I feel your pain. And I know your conquerors and all that. So conquer it. Yeah. Be it. And Sunday is going to be a super sad story. So I'm not going to tell Gene about it. And we'll, I'll tell you guys on Sunday hey. about a sad story. So yeah, follow us on Facebook. It is what it is. A true crime podcast. Um, Instagram, it is what it is, pod19. Twitter, it is what it is, 208, because that's where we're fucking from. And then you can also email us at it is what it is, pod19 at gmail.com. And tell me, of course, obviously, if I hurt your feelings and make it a good story, like I said, or else I just won't care. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get on to me. You please know what I mean? comment, though. That would be fun. Yeah, please, guys, if you guys can share... Tell a fucking friend. Tell somebody. Just help us get our podcast up and going. We yep. love doing it. And like I said, you guys can donate to our podcast if you guys want to. And you guys can send. I did open it up to where people can through like Facebook and stuff. They can donate and okay. want all that fun shit. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. We are going to try. Listen, no. Yeah, we are going to try to stay away from doing ads as long as we possibly can. Yeah. But if we do become desperate for some cash on this, then ads are coming your fucking way. So, sorry, but gotta get a microphone, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're just stuck in the day old ages. That's all right. I think we're doing great. Shout out to Jessica. I know you're listening. Oh, sweet. And like, <laughs> if you guys have anything, I did get a suggestion from Robin for a story. If anybody else has any suggestions, you'll get your own personal little shout out. Oh, I have maybe a suggestion we'll do it. of a show I watched yesterday. I'll talk to oh, you about Oh, see, it. then right. there we go. All right. So yeah, you guys stay beautiful, conquer this fucking stupid ass world, and don't let it fucking take you down. Always remember, it is what it is, dude. It already happened. Yep. It is what it is. Walk tall, baby. Yep. Peace out. Thanks.